The Lodgett Forest Research Station is owned by the University of California, managed by UC Berkeley uh, within the College of Natural Resources. The central mission of Blodgett Forest is to facilitate research that improves the understanding of forests and uh, improves the management of forests. One thing we want to do here is test out new approaches, and so I can take risks and, and I can do things experimentally. The university was given the property back in the 1930s, and at that time, uh, it wasn't the, the tall forest that, that, that we see now. It was actually a very young forest because of a harvest that occurred about 100 years ago. We know that they left about six trees per acre. And that harvesting history is actually fairly common throughout the Sierra Nevadas. Blodgett Forest, it's 4,000 acres, primarily mixed conifer forest. It means that this type of forest is diverse because of all those different species. It also is a fairly productive forest. Uh, it, it grows relatively fast. We're talking about you know, two million acres or so within the Sierra Nevada that are similar to Blodgett Forest in terms of its productivity and the species composition. And those include industrial landowners, non-industrial forest landowners, and people like me who live in the forest in a rural area. I only have five acres. The traditional uses for the forest, timber is one, certainly wildlife habitat, water quality and, and water yield. A lot of the water derives from the forest originally. Carbon sequestration recently has been an important role. And then certainly recreation, so public use uh, of forests. There are lots of different management alternatives uh, that, that we know about, and we tend to do them all here at Blodgett Forest. We have certain areas where we don't do anything. We call those reserves. That's kind of an important experimental control for us. On the other end, we do more intensive harvesting practices, for example, even age management or uneven age management. We might do a clear cut or what's called a shelter wood type of harvest where most trees in a, in a given area might be harvested and then it's replanted. We also do what's called a selection harvest where an individual tree or a group of trees might be harvested. We certainly try to measure uh, the growth rate uh, and the differences in growth rates pretty carefully. Uh, and with the unmanaged forest where we don't do anything, uh, we see the growth rate slowing down and we also see differences in how the species composition is changing. And that's compared to our other alternatives, for example, where we do a thinning. We can actually get the growth rate to continue at a high level for a longer period of time. By thinning, we can give more light, more water, more nutrients to an individual tree compared to an unmanaged stand, which each individual tree has fewer resources. So one thing we've done with respect to fire hazard is apply all of the different tools that one has for reducing fire hazard prescribed fire, mechanical treatments uh, with chainsaws, and then we've done combination. We try to be self-sufficient in terms of our business approach. We've had a timber harvest every year here for the past 52 years, and we take that income and then we invest it back into the forest. We like to think of, of Blodgett as being this location where everyone who's interested in forest throughout the state can come and learn about different ways of managing the forest. Because we actually do all of these different management practices, it sets it up as a very good location for landowners to come and, and simply, first of all, just to see them, see how they look. Okay, how a forest looks is very important to people, so the aesthetic value is very important. Many people don't like how a forest looks after a prescribed fire. Maybe it's because of the, the black char that, that people see. Some people don't like the way that a forest looks after doing mechanical treatment. Many people don't like the way that stumps look because we measure the impacts of these different alternatives, we can give them actual information. So for example, uh, what an alternative might mean with respect to wildlife habitat, or what it might mean with respect to water yield, or things like that. When I bring them here and I can walk out into the forest with them uh, and show them what I've learned over the years, uh, for me, uh, it's very gratifying. It really empowers them to make their own decision on how to manage their own forest. The decisions that are made about the forest are so long-lasting and I think that's why they're so important.